Hey you guys, hello, hello, Ari Squires here. I'm hoping that I have a good connection. I didn't check my Wi-Fi before I came on. So I'm hoping that I have a good connection. Thank you guys that are coming back for this replay. Um, thank you guys that are coming on live. Um, when you come on, let me know you're here. I am going to just share something really personal. Hey, Stephanie. Hello, hello. I'm going to share something really personal that a lot of people may not be too familiar with unless you've been really um, close to me or one of my clients. And I may have shared this with you guys during maybe a mastermind or something like that. Hey, Charlotte Avery. Hey, Sherry. Hello, ladies. Thank you guys so much for um, coming on and joining me real fast. I have haven't been on um, social media much lately at all because I have been grinding. You know how it is when you get in your grind and you're working and you're focused and you're making things happen behind the scenes. And so um, I thought I would come on here because something has been on my heart to share because I've been hearing so much, hey, 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 um, from so many different women in particular who are at the moment going through something really um, traumatic. Um, a lot of losses, a lot of um, new discoveries, a lot of um, pain and traumatic experiences that are happening in people who, um, I don't know, seem to be coming into my life for some reason. And so I find myself having to share, you know, some wisdom and, and, and some, some knowledge and some encouragement, you know, to keep going because we all um, go through something many, many times. Um, hopefully if we go through it one time, we learn our lesson. Um, but there was um, a time with me um, as far as business why, hey, cat, I miss you. I miss you, miss you, miss you. I'll be in sack soon trying to get there, girl, trying to get there. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, most of you guys know that I'm Ari Squires, um, but for those of you that don't know, maybe you're sharing this and this is, you're seeing me for the first time, maybe you're your new friend, hello, hello, and so I own a company called Profit Attraction Academy, I also have a book publishing company called CEO Publishing, and both of my companies are thriving, they're doing very well, um, but things weren't always like that, <laughs> okay, you have to start somewhere, right, Rhonda knows, right, Rhonda, one of my clients, you gotta start somewhere, you gotta crawl before you walk and before you run run right and so um but before that i owned and operated for 10 years a dance and performing arts school so these two businesses that i'm doing now profit attraction academy and the book publishing company and then my film company film company is very new it's only been doing that a year and a half um but the, the my two companies that i'm doing now it's been about four or five years so you know it took some time about a year or so to get those back to the money that i was making with my dance school which was over six figures and you know making money and thriving right but you know, it wasn't always like that. So there was a period when, like, Rhonda's like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> hey, Rondell. Um, um, so there was a period when I started my dance school. I jumped in with no business plan. I just jumped in like, hey, I just, uh, like, like new entrepreneurs, you're excited. You have no strategy. You don't have no plan. You just have this passion, this mission to serve in some way. Right. And so I, I wasn't a dancer, but I wanted to create a place where young girls can come and be around people who look like them. Because every dance school that was in my area, it, it did. There, we weren't there. We weren't being represented very well. So I wanted to create this space. And so the first two, three years, it was banging because it was new. It was something that my community in the Fredericksburg, Virginia area needed at the time. And so it was just like booming, doing very well. But then we hit a recession. 2008-2009 that recession hit hard I started my, my dance school in 2004 my mom passed in 2005 and so I went in and and not bought but I leased this big old space this big expensive building put a whole bunch of money into the renovations and you know all of these things um and like I said it was doing good but that recession that was that bad time. My husband even suffered in his business. He had lost his job at the radio station. Um, it, we had just had our son. My son was about one. He was born in 2007. I don't know. I can't think. But anyway, um, 
No, I don't even think my son was born at this time. I'm not sure, you guys. But I know it was very, 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 very rough for us at that time. We literally lost everything. I had to take repossession, a voluntary repossession. I couldn't afford, we couldn't afford our mortgage. It was just a lot of stuff, you know, going on at that time to where it was it was rough. I had to not necessarily close my dance school, but I had to move to a new facility. Um, it was um, it was rough um, financially, emotionally because you have this dream and you know you and, and things are going so well and then all of a sudden everything is at once is just starting to come at you have you guys been there right say raise your hand say yes it seems like all at once everything is coming at you at one time like boom 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 like everything is trying to knock you down and knock you down right if you've been there say yes right if you've been there say yes so um so i went through i went through that time but at the end of the day i just want to share with you guys because i know so many people are going through this right now and i'm going into this no more chains movement again where we're sharing um, our stories of our pain our losses our hurt being broken and so on and so forth so I I think this is a, a really good time to just share some 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 tips. Rhonda said, yes, Lord. <laughs> starting over is rough. And starting over is so rough. But these are the things that kept me grounded. And these are the things that I've been sharing with the ladies that I've been speaking with over the last like two weeks or so who are going through something really traumatic where they're losing it all and they feel like they want to give up and, you know, so on and so forth. And so one of those things was that I never complain. Right. And and you guys, I took full responsibility for the situation that I was in. Yes, I can blame it on the recession. Yes, I can blame it on, you know, the community. They didn't want to support the business. Um, I can blame it on everything and everybody. You understand what I'm saying? I, I could have done that. But I had to look at myself and ask myself, okay, what did I do wrong? What could I have done to prevent us getting in this type of financial space and a lot of times we're not taking responsibility for our own actions we're too busy putting the blank Lagranda's she like hearting that up we're too busy wanting to blame other people for our problems for our mishaps for our misfortune right and so that was the main thing I took responsibility and I had to look at myself and say okay and reevaluate some things and some decisions and some mistakes that I made right everything is always a lesson but also I never complain I never complained, didn't have nothing to eat, couldn't feed my son, you know, couldn't pay my car note, I had to give away my BMW and go get a little putt-putt, right, car always break down, scared to take it on the freeway, <laughs> you know, it's not, it's funny now, but it was not funny then, you hear me? It was not funny then, it was painful then, but I really, I couldn't complain, I, had, I couldn't complain, and so then another thing that I did was, that I still, no matter what, no matter, no matter, I remember there was a time when I have a godmother who lives here in this area. She, she like adopted me as, um, her, her daughter. She's only like 10 to 12 years older than me, but she's like a mother figure to me. And I love her to death. She's always been there for me and my family. And it had got so bad because I was too, I had too much pride to go to social services and ask for food stamps and things like that. I had too much pride. We did. And me and my husband, both. we were, we were struggling. Um, and I had to go and ask people for money. I had to go and ask people for food. And that was a situation that I had never, ever, ever been in in my whole entire life. But, but while I had to humble myself and do that, um, I had to just keep my eyes on the vision. I never lost focus of where it was that I knew me and my husband and my family would be or where we wanted to be and what our desires was. I never, I never, um, I'm getting emotional because I'm thinking about those moments of having to go and ask somebody for something. It was, it was rough, but I needed it. You know, I, I had, you, we got to do what we have to do, right? I had, we had to eat, but I remember that I still focused on the vision. I still talked about the vision. I still saw myself where I wanted to be. I still saw, you know, I still, I still, um, pictured myself in that space of knowing where basically where I am now and where I'm going. You get what I'm saying? I'm, we never arrive. Okay. We never arrive. I, I haven't arrived, but you know, I'm in a better place mentally. 
emotionally, financially, spiritually, right? All of the, all my relationships, everything is better now because, because I never gave up on the vision. A lot of people give up. A lot of people just stop. They, they, it's, uh, they just, they give up. You know, they quit. They forget about what's, what's possible. They forget about, um, that place where when you started out that drive that determination that you had and you know and and when things were great you know when things are great you you living it up you know you everything is good everything is great but when you get to that heart when you hit rock bottom you you we sometimes just want to give up we forget so i never never gave up and another thing that i did here was that Every bad moment that happened during that time, I looked at it in a positive light. I looked at it as a as a good moment. I looked at it as a teachable moment. Like, this is not bad. I'm not going to sit here, okay? I may have my pity party for five minutes or ten minutes, maybe a day. Sometimes we got to have a full day, right, ladies and gentlemen? Sometimes we, sometimes we got to give ourselves a full day, to have a pity party and that's okay. Yes, we're strong black women, we're strong women, we're strong men, yeah, okay. But it's okay too to give ourselves a day to, to, to sit in that pity, okay? And I'm sure you guys know that, I hope you know that. But I, I looked at every single moment that was bad and I considered it good, right? If something bad happened, I always looked at it as an opportunity to learn something. Okay, and that's crucial. And you guys, these this what I'm sharing with you right now is what I continue to do because even though, you know, things are better and we're in a different place, we've purchased two homes since then, I've paid off all my bills, you know, things are different now. I'm traveling, you know, I'm helping more people, I'm connected to more people, you know, things are different now, but these are the, still the same things that I continue to do in order to grow and prosper in my life and in my businesses and in my relationships um, right now as we speak. So... That was one thing. I looked at every single thing, every single downturn as a learning experience. And um, and lastly, you guys, I think I said this already, but I looked at what I could do different. You know, I, I didn't look at cutting back. I looked at what can I do more? And that was when really I really started investing in myself. I really start because at that time I found myself putting more into everything else or other people. So I really started thinking about how could I make myself better to make sure that this situation never happens again. Right. What can what can I invest in and what can I learn? Who can I connect myself with? Who can mentor me? Who can coach me? Where can I put the little money that I do have into something that's going to build me later? You know, a lot of times we get in certain financial situations and we think I don't have it. We think that we have to hold on to it. And sometimes in my situation back then and even now, that's not the case. When things are at their worst, that's when I feel like I need to put more into something, that I need to invest more of my time, my energy, my money, something into something that I know later on is going to grow. Because remember, I still have my eye on the vision. And one thing that I've learned from one of my mentors is you cannot make decisions today. Based, you can't make decisions on where you are today. You make decisions today on where you want to be later. You hear me? Did that make sense, you guys? You do not make decisions on where you are today. Because right now you may be, you know, going through a hard time. Things may be a little bit rough. Things may not be, you know, where they were, right? But you got to make decisions right now as if you were in that space that you want to be. Let that, let that marinate for a little bit, right? Let that marinate for a little bit. So these are the things that I continue to do in order to grow, in order to expand and elevate and, and grow and propel and, and be all that I can be. <laughs> so, um, yes, Cass said, yes, invest. Winners never quit. You know, but you know what? Sometimes, you know, we have to quit. Sometimes we have to take a break. And I think that we are on this, you know, with social media. Now, you guys, I have to stay away from social media personally because it's so saturated with BS, in my opinion. It's just, it's just too much. So I don't do social media as much as I used to. I make a lot, most of, I make most of my money offline, but, um, 
I do love social media because I'm able to connect with people with, like you guys. Uh, <laughs> but a lot of times social media makes us think that everything is all good or that everything has to be always positive. Well, no, sometimes, you know, it's not going to be positive. We're going to have those moments where we are going to take a break. We are going to pause. You know, we are going to um, take some time to work on our work on ourselves. We are going to take some time to work in our businesses, our our careers, or you know whatever that next step is, or whatever that vision is. We do have to quit sometimes. So quitting is okay as long as you get back on your feet and get back to, to stepping. <laughs> okay, so it's okay. It's okay. Winners do quit sometimes. We do have to. We do have to stop. I, that's just my opinion. But I get what you're saying. You know winners don't quit and quit for all but you know sometimes we do have to take a little break you know and, and these are the things that um have have worked for me so i hope that this has empowered you guys in some kind of way like i said we're, we're really really getting um in this space now of where i'm going to start promoting um, the No More Chains movement, which is about succeeding against the odds. I'm about to have the opportunity again. I just went in November and spoke to some young ladies at a um, juvenile detention center. And I get the opportunity to go with them and show them what's possible because I just posted this on my page earlier that I've been there. I've felt lost. I felt like I don't give I don't care. Uh, you know, when you're in that space, you in that mind frame, you kind of feel like I don't care. <laughs> Can't nobody tell me nothing, you know, or you're in the other side is you feel broken. You feel like you don't have anybody. You feel like you don't have support. And so I've been there and the things that I've had to do is everything that I, t that I just shared. Everything that I just shared with you guys is what I had to do, mainly changing my circle and reevaluating myself and taking responsibility for my own actions <laughs> I, so many people try to blame everything and everybody else. I could have blamed everything and everybody else. But at the end of the day, if you believe in the law of attraction, <laughs> then you know that a lot of times, most of the time, we are responsible for the things that happen to us in our lives, whether good or bad. We are responsible. So we have to look within ourselves and see what changes we can make in order to make change okay so i just wanted to share that with you guys um so i'm gonna read your comments really really quickly anybody have anything you guys want to share uh, because i just felt this i've been feeling to share this for about a week but i've been so busy <laughs> I've been so busy working on my clients that we do ghost writing and so ghost writing requires a lot of work because we have to really get into the minds of our clients um, and their um, audience to write their stories or to write their content and so it requires a lot of my attention so I've just been busy and like I said social media is really starting to um, bore me um, but I still love it I'm still here I'm still connected because like I say it's a, it's a great platform um, so it's Stephanie said, you have to know what um, what to quit mm -hmm, and when. Yep. Winners do quit sometimes. Good stuff. Thank you, Joan. Thank you, Amanda. Hey, Bakari. Well, you guys, that's all I wanted to share. Um, I just felt the need to come on here and just bless you guys with, thank you, Rhonda. Just bless you guys with some, some information on, don't give up. Um, if you do, if you feel like you need to give up, give up take but when you give up or when you quit give yourself time to work on yourself so what i said was for those of you guys that are just coming on i said i never complained and i took responsibility for every single thing um that i did um i never kept i never took my eyes off the vision Okay, never took my eyes off the vision. I looked at every bad moment as a good moment, as an opportunity to learn something. You know, every time, you know, and I share this with my daughter, like if something bad happens, you, you mess up or, you know, something bad happens. Hey, okay, that's cool. That's life. This is an opportunity to learn from it. What did you learn from this situation? It's not bad. You know, my son, he's 10. He is frustrated all the time. He's so competitive with himself, which is good, but he's so competitive. He always wants to win. He always wants to just do good he wants to be the best and I get that but what did you learn baby when you weren't the best <laughs> what did you learn right and so that was something for me and then I get I evaluated and took time to work on myself I took time to work on myself and then everything changed my businesses changed my businesses prospered my, the people I attracted into my life changed like everything changed now I am truly at this point in my life today 
I am truly living my dream life. I am living the life that I dreamt about, that I wrote in my journal about, that I talked to my mom about 10, 15, 20 years ago that I share with my husband when we met, we talked about where we wanted to be and how we wanted to live. And, you know, from, from everything, from, from everything, from physically to, I may not be where I am, want to be physically. I'm working on that, <laughs> but emotionally, financially, you know, our family dynamics, you know, everything. So we, I'm literally, literally, I'm happy. I'm in a, I'm in a place of peace because I never kept my eyes off the vision. So thank you guys. I I appreciate you guys so much, so much, so much, so much for, for listening. Um, and I love you guys. I'm going to head out. Thanks, guys.